everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I have Flora by Maria Trolle, my color wheel and my Prismacolor swatch chart. I've got some Prismacolors over here. In a recent video where I showed you how to add lots of texture, depth and dimension and color to tree in this book on a page I'm working on, I mentioned that I was going to pull out my color wheel and show you how I would move forward on that page. Now the page that I'm coloring, it's got a lot of the same color on it. I've used it for a couple different tutorials. It's got a lot of browns and greens right now. So I thought I'd show you how to use the color wheel and your swatch chart together to be able to add color to a page that doesn't really have a lot going on or has a lot of the same color on it and maybe create a little bit of contrast between the colors so that some of the things on the page do really stand out, making the page come together and look beautiful as a whole. If you check the description box down below, I'll have links down there for my Facebook group, my email list, my Etsy shop and my Patreon if you'd like to support me there. I also now have channel membership if you would like to find more information out about that. You can click the join button down below this video. So this is the page I've been working on and you've seen it already in a couple videos. This house I did a video on the basics of highlighting and shadows and shading. I'll go ahead and link that one in the upper right hand corner. And then the last video that was most recent I finished off these trees here and colored another tree on another page showing you how to add lots of texture, depth, and dimension. So if you take a look at this page, you can tell that it's got a lot of the same colors. I've got yellows and greens and a lot of brown. Over here when I did the trees, I did add a little bit of peach just to create a little bit of pop in the tree bark. That's something that I've never really done before, but I love the way that it turned out. And so at this point, I really need to create a plan for this page to be able to move forward with it because if you look at the page you can clearly tell there's a lot of other things on this page that would naturally be brown or green. This branch that's sticking up back here that looks a lot like a fern if you use the back of the book and you look up what kind of fern it is, you will find that it is naturally green, kind of like yellow greens. Now, if I were to color that with a lot of yellowish greenish colors, it would not stand out at all from the top of the house. And then if you look up in the back of the book what these flowers are, these flowers are white flowers and I may color those that color. But at this point for me, it's just a really good idea to kind of lay out all of the colors and what I'm gonna do so that as the page comes to life, it all comes together and it just looks really beautiful. Now down here I do have some water so that naturally will be blue, but I'm still trying to decide what I'm gonna do with what looks like sand. Back here behind these trees, it looks like this little house is just kind of sitting up on a hill and it's in the forest. It's a super cute page, I absolutely love it. But I'm gonna have to come up with a color so that the sand still stands out behind the trees here because the trees have so much brown in them and naturally the sand would probably be a lot of these same colors. I find that a lot of times when we go into coloring our pages, we want to color everything so that it looks very realistic looking. And so for this page, I'm going to have to come away from that a little bit and be a little bit creative. I'm going to grab my color wheel and and we are going to figure out some colors. So just looking at the color wheel and trying to match up some of the colors, it looks like a lot of what we have going on up here is going to be a lot of yellow greens. And so what I would like to do is use complementary colors. And then that way this plant here will actually stand out apart from the tree bark that is laying in front of it, as well as the little house that is laying over here off to the side. So that when somebody looks at my coloring page, they actually see the tree and it's not just kind of hidden and blended in with everything else. So it's very simple to use your color wheel and choose your complementary colors because to do that, you're just gonna go straight across to the other side of the color wheel. So if I have my color wheel on yellow green, you can see here that the arrow is pointing to yellow green and it will tell you here on your color wheel with these arrows how to choose your complementary color. So if I wanted to choose a complementary color so that that plant really stands out, I could go directly across from the yellow green that puts me on violet red. If I wanted to go split complementary, which I could also do, I could choose either one of these colors here, which would be to either side of the color that is complementary. And these would be the two split complementary colors. But either one of those I 
choose, even if I choose colors and I go with a combination of some of these, it is still going to make it stand out from what I have going on here with all of this green. So as I mentioned earlier, I did add a pop of color using peach on my trees. So I think by putting together a color combination of violet reds for our plant back here, I think it'll blend in really nicely. So now let's move on to choosing our colors. Okay, so here is my swatch chart. This is my Prismacolor swatch chart. This is available in my Etsy shop. I finally got all of my Prismacolors swatched out yesterday onto my own swatch chart. I'm so excited that I finally have them all laid out so that I could see all the colors. Okay, so let's go ahead and choose the colors that we are gonna use. We're gonna go ahead and put together a color combination. If I take my color wheel and lay the violet red section right up against my swatch chart, you can already tell which color are going to match up very well. We've got the pomegranate, and then I also have the magenta. I've got process red, which is really pretty. And then if I wanted to go more so into the red violets, let me turn this just a little bit. I've got mulberry. And then up here, the dahlia purple is a really pretty match. And I think I may go into the red violets too, just so when I put the color combination together, it's gonna be a little bit more interesting and it's gonna stand out just a little bit more. Now, if we come down here just a a little bit. We've got the pink rose, which is a really good match to this right here, which would be what a red violet would look like if you tinted it. And what I mean by that is adding white. You could see as you add a bigger percentage of white, it just changes the value of the color and continues to lighten it up. So I don't know, I think I might want to use the pink rose or the deco pink is super pretty too, and that will brighten it up just a little bit. I don't have a whole lot of space in each one of these spaces on the plant, so I probably shouldn't put too many colors together, but let me see what I can come up with. So I tried to match up the colors to the color wheel as much as I possibly could, and the colors that I chose are Mulberry, Process Red, and then the Pink Rose, which is the one I've mentioned several times, and I kind of went back and forth as to whether or not I should use that color, but it is a really close match here, and so I really wanted to be able to use it, and I think it's gonna be really pretty with the Process Red and the Mulberry. And then if I need to go a little bit darker to add a little bit more depth, I grab the Dahlia Purple. So I'll show you what it looks like if I swatch them out, because you always want to swatch out your color first before you put them on your coloring pages but I think these are really pretty together okay so I have nice sharp tips on my pencils and we're gonna start laying our color down and we are going to see how it looks after it starts coming to life so like I said I don't know if the mulberry is going to be dark enough but I'm gonna come in here and add this color on the tips I probably should have laid down my highlight color first because these spaces are really super small. So let me go ahead and lay down some of the pink rose just so I can make sure I reserve that space in there like I always do. I don't know why I started with the darkest color, probably because I'm just so used to using other pencils right now. I've been using a lot of my other pencils, my Derwent Color Soft and my Polychromos, and I've been taking a lot of time out to just color. So it's been really nice but I really wanted to be able to finish this page, but I wanted to do a video on it as well. And until I did this video, <laughs> I couldn't finish the page. So I decided to pull the camera out and get this done. But these spaces are super, super small and I may speed some of this up, but I want you all to see what it's gonna look like once it all comes together. I'm just adding the process red right in here. Like I said, I don't have a whole lot of space to be able to do this and I really want to be able to still see that pink rose. But I feel like the two darker colors are still going to add a lot of brightness and vibrancy. And then we have the more muted color with the pink rose that sort of tones it down and allows it to give the same vibe as I have going on throughout the rest of the page where a lot of the colors are more muted with just a pop of color in certain places. I may need to grab that Dahlia purple because I'm not sure that this color is going to be dark enough. Let me just get a little bit more of it down here and see how much I could darken it up by adding some layers here. And then a little bit more of the process red. And then I'm gonna blend it all together with the pink rose. But do you see already how that just makes it stand out? from everything else. When it's done, I think it's gonna look really beautiful, but I'm gonna grab my Dahlia Purple. So maybe where I have this line here, right down the center, I will add a pop of this right in there. 
I think that will make a bit of a difference. Now maybe I'll just add a little bit of this just on some of the edges. Oh yeah, that made quite a bit of a difference. Sometimes if you wanna add just a little bit extra depth and you wanna make something really stand out, just grab a darker color, or even like in this case, a color that is just a little bit different. This one has much more purple in it, and so it does stand apart from the other colors that I was using, and it's going to help to create all that extra added depth that you wanna see on your coloring pages. But oh my gosh, I love that. I think it's super pretty. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these and I'm gonna speed it up to music so that you all can see it come together really quickly but I want you to see what it looks like in the end after I bring it to life and how it's really going to stand out from everything else that I have going on on this page and then as I continue on this page I am going to include these colors in other places on the page probably over here and that will help me to add a lot of balance to the page so that everything comes together really nicely once it's done can see how that just made such a huge difference by using the color wheel and planning out the colors that I wanted to use. I am going to continue this page and try to finish it up. I am going to choose some other colors. I know that I'm going to use some blue down here for the water and try to create a water effect. I think I'm going to do some grays over here for what I think might be sand. I don't think it's grass. Maybe I'll make it look like grass. Maybe I'll make some realistic grass. I haven't decided on that yet, but for the background, I think I'm going to do a little bit more blue back here, and then I may make these leaves green, maybe add a little bit of something else to them, but I am going to bring the red violets over to this side of the page as well, and maybe use them a little bit over here, so that way I'm able to create a little bit of balance. Now, one last thing I do want to do on this page before I end the video is I do need to color the center of this plant here, and I do want it to really stand out so I've decided to use black cherry I think it will really stand out and still blend in at the same time with some of these other colors I'm gonna try to add a little bit of pink rose in between some of the spaces just to give it a little bit of a pop so let's go ahead and lay this color down and see how it looks it is a fairly dark color I probably need to sharpen it <laughs> And I'm just going to come in here and try to line the outside just a little bit. And then I am going to come in the center of all of the spaces that I left white. And I'm going to use my pink rose in those areas. Let's go ahead and try that now. So I have the pink rose and I'm just going to blend these colors in or blend them together. And it actually created a really pretty color, the blend of those two together. Never be afraid to blend some of your colors together if you wanna lighten something up or change the way it looks just a little bit. And if you're not sure before you add them onto your coloring page, just test them out on a scrap sheet of paper and see how you like them before you lay them down onto your coloring coloring page, but I really like the blend of those two colors together. And this color black cherry is really, really dark. So the more layers you apply, it will really change it up. I'm going to go ahead and add some of the pink rose right in there. And then I'm going to try to darken it up right here to really make this stand out. I'm trying not to cover up where I laid that pink rose right there. And so this way the outside is just lined a little bit. And then I have to go all the way to the top and I really want to darken this part up here. So I hope this video was a little bit helpful to you and showed you how to use your color wheel to be able to plan out your page just a little bit, especially if you get stuck because you realize that 
all of the colors you have used on your page so far are kind of all the same. But yeah, your color wheel is a wonderful tool to bring out and plan your coloring page out and help you to get some more ideas. But I hope I was able to show you a little trick or two using the color wheel and then going to the swatch chart and matching up those colors to the colors on the color wheel and putting together a really pretty color combination. And sometimes you just need an extra color that's maybe just a little bit darker to add a little bit more depth and dimension. But I think it came together pretty nice and I really like it. But if you would like to see me do more on this page, let me know in the comments below. Everything you've seen me use in this video, I I will have in the description box below. I hope y'all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.